Welcome to Mojo Talks. Pretty cool episode this time. We're talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Trailer 2 has arrived for this movie, which is hugely anticipated now that Infinity War fever is upon us and we're all wondering what's going to happen next. Uh, so we've convened a panel and we're going to talk about the new trailer. I should mention, spoiler alert, because this is going to touch on things that happened in Infinity War. So if you haven't seen Infinity War and you want to avoid spoilers, be be warned. Uh, so we have Liam over here, who's a producer of our film department. How you doing, Liam? Not too bad. How are you? I'm good. And we have Andrew, who's in our uh, both comics and video game department, uh, producer as well. And you guys are both big fans of comic books and MCU, uh, and some more than others. <laughs> some, some more than others. Wow. Well, a bit more critical. Okay. Of uh, and so let's get right to it. We, the, the new trailer has dropped. Let's have a look. So, how long have you been Ant Man again? <laughs> Not long. It just sort of happened. I wish I could fight bad guys like you. And I seem to mess it up almost every time. Maybe you just need someone watching your back. Okay, so what have we learned of the plot so far from this trailer? Uh, well, it obviously takes place after uh, and after Civil War, but mm -hmm. before Infinity War. It's a very important point, right? So it's like a see, it's like a direct sequel to Ant Man One and Civil War. So he's still he's under house arrest. He's We've still trying to work things out with his daughter. Yeah. Uh, but meanwhile, Hank Pym is trying to find his wife. He's shrinking down subatomic, which is something he warned them not to do in the first movie, mm -hmm. but now he's actively doing it to try to find his wife. To go and find Michelle Pfeiffer, who we don't see in, in the trailer, no. but she is in the poster. I believe she's in the poster. I, I would have to re-look that up, but I, I don't know if they're just completely ignoring her in the, in the promotional material, but. But I think it's safe to assume she'll be yes. in this movie. I think so, she's, yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. All right, carry on. Yep. Hi. Like a partner. Dr. Pym, I actually heard what happened to you. You opened up the quantum realm. That's when this crazy creepy ghost who like walks through walls and stuff. Stole your tech. And now she wants to take over the world or whatever. So that was an interesting point. So in the comic books, Ghost is an Iron Man villain. Nice. And Ghost's technology isn't related to Hank Pym's Pym particles. But in this, it seems like they're co-opting her exactly her and bringing her into Ant Man. Flipping it a little bit. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and that's kind of that's to me that's really interesting because it means there's not like it sort of condenses things a little bit and keeps things like a bit tighter and gives Ghost in it's a man in the comics, it's a woman in the. I like her look though. What do you think of yeah. her costume? It looks pretty. Looks pretty badass. It's pretty sleek. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, what do you, you kind of hate? This stuff does. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, like this, this trailer I think has me a bit more excited than I normally would for a movie like this. Um, I think the them swapping it so Ant Man gets the ghost villain is interesting because I mean, like I feel like Ant Man doesn't really have any iconic villains that people would know of. So I think well, they had Ultron. More of a, Ultron, but the Avengers stole Ultron from Ant Man. Right. So they're just kind of swapping it, all over the place. It gives it a bit more higher stakes, I guess, with with a. a but more A-list villain. It's, it's like a villain key party if you think about it. They're just yeah. <laughs> everyone throw your keys in, and we'll see who you go home with at the end of the night. Um, but I, I, you know, what is also interesting though is that um, you know the, the humor so far uh, in this movie. Of course, the first one was very funny, but uh, you know, I feel that you know it's it's a bit of a palate cleansing after the 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 darkness of uh, Infinity War. This is kind of this is setting the tone a little bit lighter. I think. I, I was talking, I think, to you about this earlier. Was that um, it, it's given me a bit of like a '90s comedy tone to it, especially with the it might the be song, the Paul Rudd part the, and the song. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I don't, that's my take on watching the trailer for a few times, um, especially towards the end. We'll talk about it later with like the comedy at the end. I think it would fit right in with like. The, you're kind of like Adam Sandler's, or I don't know, of the '90s. <laughs> At two point, so it's it's sort of classic Marvel movies, but a big departure from where Infinity War was. Exactly. For sure. I hadn't yeah, thought about that. That is dark. Let's uh, right. let's keep going. Who would have believed that in your hour of need you would turn to us? Not me. Because I mean, we robbed you. Do you remember? That's us. The only chance we've got is both of you. Man and the Wasp teaming up. Follow my lead. She 
she seems more intense. We were talking about was, comedy. Yeah, this was my favorite part of the trailer. It was the most ridiculous shot I've ever seen of an ant playing drums. Um, well, I've never seen an ant playing drums. What is before. going? What is going on here? That's, we were talking about this earlier. It was that we think this is either part of a, some sort of story. Uh, Michael Pena's character's telling. That, or, see, that's what I think I it is. I think it's Michael Pena is like being like, oh, you 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 got these yeah. ants. You can you can make like an ant band. You know, you you can be the guitarist. <laughs> then you could get an ant to be the drummer. That's what I'm I think. To think. That's of, what like, I think is happening. I'm trying to think of like what context this would would happen in the movie and why they would think to put it in a trailer. Well, you know, <laughs> but you know, it, it, there's certainly it's touching on music, and you talked about that before. I love the fact the addition of uh, it takes two in this oh, trailer. I think it thematically also plays in with the with especially they're, Ant, they're definitely Ant not the just making this an Ant Man movie. They're making an Ant Man and Wasp movie. But I also like how you know with uh, Thor Ragnarok uh, they they used that classic Zeppelin song. This one they're using uh, yeah. uh, you know a, another classic from a different era, but you know Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock. So I, I love the vibe that it gives to the trailer so far. For sure. Yeah. And there's um there was a spot at the beginning of the trailer that I really really liked uh, that I also thought was really funny, where uh, there's all this chaos going on outside and there's people like in a cafe just kind of ignoring it. Yeah. And there's people across the street who are just keep walking, don't even really bother to look at what's going on because like the people in this universe are now so tired of superheroes yeah. and all that's not like news or interesting. I mean, and I've, that's kind of a metaphor for the cinematic universe. I think, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I think they're, they're self-aware. They, they know that people have gotten superhero fatigue to a certain extent. So this is the property, I think, where they can play with a lot of those ideas and they can kind of take more chances to be uh, self-deprecating. Yeah, I uh, think that's, that's a really subtle shot that I, I, I really like because typically you don't think, especially with these the bigger scale Marvel movies, you don't really think of what this, the civilians are doing or like, and I think that shot is like something that we don't really see that much in this in the, the franchise, I guess. Because they're not all running away. Usually when yeah. you see civilians, they're just Especially like, Especially Infinity War, you see like a lot of people running in peril on the streets. A lot of good action though. I've noticed this too, that uh, you know, for a movie that's supposed to be more of the funny kind of lighter tone, there seems to be some really good action. I like that they play with the, the, the size, mm -hmm. sizing of things and th th we saw the salt shaker, which that I was thought great. was a really yeah. funny shot. Yeah. Let's continue. Cool. All right. Get loose now. No, no. You go low, I'll go high. I have wings. Why would I go low? We're gonna die. Hey, what I miss? We were just tiny. I was partners with Hank on a project called Goliath. How big did you get? My record, 21 feet. You? 65 feet. 65. I love this part. Yeah, yeah this is great. Uh, the uh, the dick jokes. Uh, the uh, uh, well, you know, Evangeline Lilly and her point after this. It, it's great, but it's it's also interesting to have a reference to Goliath in this movie. Yeah, yeah, because this is. Um, I mean, a couple of, like Hank uh, Pym has also been called Goliath, but there was sort of an official. Well, they called him Black Goliath at the uh -huh. time, uh, and it was Bill Foster. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of fun to have like see Bill Foster like he was a superhero before all this Marvel Cinematic stuff went down. And it was just like a middle age. Just, just retired. Yeah. Um, yeah. This, I, I was like dying laughing at this scene. I think like it really is a testament to like Paul Rudd's facial Absolutely. expression. He's like so charismatic in this in this scene, I think. And um, yeah, I think it's still crazy to me that he's a superhero. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys noticed, by the way, um, just getting back to Ghost, that uh, the costume almost looks like those desert creatures in Star Wars? Ooh. <laughs> I, forget what, I forget what they're called, but it, uh, as soon as I saw sand it, it's like people. The, the yeah. sand people, yeah. So that would be an interesting crossover. That would be an interesting um, crossover. So let's talk about how this fits into Infinity War. Because, I mean, there's, what, 10 seconds left? Uh, yeah, we can, I think it's just a continuation of this joke. Yeah. <laughs> if you two are finished comparing sizes... 65. 
So coming out of Infinity War, my first question was, where's Ant-Man and what role does he play in the universe at this point? Um, what are we thinking with regards to Infinity War and how all these worlds mesh? I think they, they poked fun at that with the, the teaser trailer, teaser, teaser trailer, I guess, for this. Um, when they had all the Avengers, like they were obviously in their actor personas, but they were like, where was Ant-Man during all this? And like, mm -hmm. tell like Scarlett Johansson. And, yeah, and they have their theories. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, don't, I, I mean, I'll throw it to you, I guess, because I... Uh, we should say spoiler alert again. Yeah, so, spoilers, you know, yeah, Infinity War spoilers. We're getting right we're getting into, into the into depths, uh, into the weeds here. So Yeah, so I mean, I think that, I mean, my theory, and I'm pretty confident in it, is that the post credit scene for this movie is going to have uh, the Wasp and uh, Hank Pym disappearing. Not Hank Pym, uh, or do you mean Hank Pym? Yeah, Hank Pym. Paul Rudd? I think, or... yeah, no, Paul Rudd is Scott Lang. Oh, right. I yeah, think it's going to have the Wasp and Hank Pym uh, disappearing, you know, becoming Ash, and then he's going to be like, oh, wow, what's going on? And then his pager's going to beep, and it's like Captain America or, or whatever. I, uh, Captain America. I think it would be more, inter like, more interesting from an ambitious standpoint if... if and Scott vicious. Lang, yeah. <laughs> if Scott Lang disappeared, it would blow my mind if just in the middle of the movie, like instead of instead of it being a, an end credit scene or they build up to it, just like in the middle of a, a scene of dialogue or in the middle of like a battle scene, if people just start turning to Ash in the middle of the movie. So if this in actuality was happening simultaneously yes. with uh, Infinity War. I think that would blow people's minds, I think. <laughs> that just blew my mind. That's awesome. I, just like without any like build up to it if just like people were just like. And would it be an Easter egg and it would just kind of live like that or would it be a big part of the movie? A big part of the movie. I think it would be crazy if it was a big part of the would movie. Would they tie in that I guess strongly? I guess that they would they would have to trust that people had seen Infinity War. Yeah, I point, mean, right? I think every, statistically, I think everybody's already seen Infinity War twice. <laughs> twice? <laughs> Everybody on Earth has already seen Infinity War, but, oh man, that would be great. So like fight scenes going on, he goes to punch somebody and they just like. And just. Disappear. Uh, the wasp turns to dust in the middle of a fight scene, or like, yeah, or in the middle of a line of dialogue. It's just out of nowhere. <sighs> is it possible that Ant Man is going to be the one to save the day? I mean, I know you know the post credit scene they call uh, Captain Marvel, um, but is there a way you think that Ant Man could play into saving the world, or or you know reversing uh, the the finger snap that snuffed out half of humanity? I don't think anything's going to happen in this movie. No. I think they're going to wait for Infinity War 2, so Avengers 4, to solve that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, and I mean, maybe, obviously, if it is Scott Lang, Paul Rudd, who is in Infinity War 2, then he will play a part mm -hmm. in fixing everything. But I don't think he's going to be the key. There's going to be something big happening in Captain Marvel to, 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 to uh, I guess, tie into that. I also yeah. wonder, and maybe, you know, from your vantage point as a comic book expert, um, you know, the quantum... Uh, is there some time control that can be uh, that, that, that can be um, gotten through? No, the... it's a lot more in the comic books. It's a yeah. lot more straightforward. Okay. Uh, Tony Stark's technology in the comic books is like even further ahead than it is in the uh, movies. But yeah. in the comic books, uh, MN's Hank Pym's uh, Pym particles are a lot less complex. Okay, so they they can't scrub back in time. No. Okay. But you know, maybe they'll somehow tie. But the thing is, if it is Scott Lang. He's not the smartest, he's the least <laughs> smart person of his crew. Right. Uh, so, like, I don't think he'll, like, have the technology or the smarts to be able to fix it, you know? Because well, he's not the genius inventor. No, he's not. But he's Paul Rudd. Everybody loves him. Uh, yeah, he's beloved by many. That's right. <laughs> and I still think a great, great casting choice for this movie. For sure. I think, uh, uh, yeah. And, and, and I'm excited to see this. I remember uh, coming out of the first Ant-Man feeling like, okay, they, they, they got this right. And yeah. it could have gone really in the wrong direction. So I feel good about this trailer. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get the answers that we want for uh, the MCU. But There's definitely going to be some sort of tie-in, I think, for sure. Especially, um, we were talking about... Uh, this being the smartest choice for, for Disney, I think, uh, to be the follow-up to the Avengers, because I think Disney doesn't really have that much faith in Ant-Man as a, as a character, because he's, he's a bit, he's not as, he's a bit of a silly character. I don't know if I'm going to get Well, he's like sort of one of the lesser Marvel. He's one of the lesser Marvel, Marvel, Marvel people, yeah. and to put this right after Infinity War, I think you're going to get a lot more people in seats that, that wouldn't have seen this. Hope, come hoping out. that this will yeah. tie into Infinity War. Which I think War. It, there'll, there'll be some sort of ties, but I don't think... 
in the big in a big way that we'll see in like Captain Marvel. Well, Kat, yeah, obviously Captain Marvel is going to really kind oh, yeah. of tie up to a lot be of the these cliffhanger things. in Infinity War is a big thing. So yeah. Well, thank you guys. Uh, let us know what you think in the comments. I think there's a lot to be gleaned from this. There's a lot of predictions we can make, but uh, ultimately, you tell us what you think, um, and then we'll tell you what we think, and then you know it'll go back and forth and back and forth. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. We'll thank see you. you next time.